We have this story from TimCast.com. Mitch McConnell abruptly stops speaking, freezes during press conference. The Senate Minority Leader was escorted to the room by Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming. Let me play this video for you. It is saddening. And uh, I would describe it as a seizure, potentially a stroke. Spinning you guys wheel ready? of death. Here we go. Is there? Oh, sorry. I got to turn the audio on. Bring it up. No, I just got to press the audio there. Fortunately, he doesn't speak for 30 Here we seconds. Go. Right. So you don't have to worry. Yeah. Cooperation and a string of, uh, uh, That's it. That's the video. He says cooperation and a string of, and then just freezes. It's. I went to. I went to a. Um, a fundraiser a long time ago, Dang. political fundraiser for seizure awareness. Oh, and this guy who suffered grand mal seizures uh, was explaining how often <laughs> he'll be in public meetings or at work and uh, he'll freeze exactly like Mitch McConnell did. And people will laugh at him and he could he could die. And he was like, awareness on what seizures look like is extremely important because of Hollywood. Everyone thinks mm. you fall to the ground and start mm. spazzing out. Some people said, I think they, it's like an absent or absence seizure, absent seizure, where you just freeze and lock up. And a lot of people were tweeting that this is may, may be what it was. Apparently, he said that he got lightheaded and he was fine and then went on to have like a normal meeting afterwards or whatever. But I think what we're seeing here is, you know, we talked a whole lot about aliens and law and morality. Our political leaders, they keep winning no matter what, no matter what, because our culture is dead. Because this country will just walk into a booth and rubber stamp D or R without a thought I'm so, because it is a dead culture. So against democracy. So they vote for Pol Pelosi. They vote for Mitch McConnell. They vote for people who should have retired 30 years ago. And I don't see it changing unless there's a hard fall. You think it was TV that deadened culture? Why no, not? no, I think it's uh, it's it's like the, it's a the Strauss generational uh, theory. So I, I would argue what you're describing. There's a lot of truth to what you're saying, Tim. And I think that it is ultimately a spiritual sickness that we are facing because we have lost the plot. Like, what is the point of human existence? Is it to just take? Is it to just, you know, become more powerful or more perfect? Like, what's the point of human existence? Is it to love and to serve and ultimately for eternity for God? Or is it to take? And that difference, I think, if people are kind of wishy-washy on that, they don't know what their purpose is, then we don't really care enough. And then we just, you know, maybe stamp like you're saying, D or R or whatever it is, we're going in and we're not really caring enough to really fight. But I do think a lot of people are fighting for the country right now and they care and they're raising young families. I know my family, we're raising a young family. We're passionate. We care about the future. We think there is a future and enough of those people, if enough of us do that, we can change it. It's going to be painful and hard at points, but I think we can change the country and make it better. So Diane, I don't think it's hopeless. I Diane it's Feinstein, hopeless. remember? She gets, she goes, she's out in the, for, what was it, like a couple months or something? How long was she out for? And then she's like, I was here the whole time. Hmm. I absolutely despise these people. Mitch McConnell, we can talk about his politics all day and night. And I'll tell you, oh, I don't like he does this. I don't like he does that. But there is nothing that, that gives me more disdain for this man than this medical episode. I have no sympathy, no empathy for his freeze up, for his stroke or seizure, because he is gripping on to the, the to the a leadership position that a younger person needs to have to help this country and he's incapable of doing it but it's not just him it is it is it is a problem in this country and all of congress where they're all it's just and and look at who is running for president we're gonna get biden versus trump i think trump's better than biden but even trump is older this is one of the big big reasons we were saying desantis is probably better is that he's a lot younger unfortunately however i don't think desantis is going to be able to pull it off because he can't seem to get a hold of his campaign well here these people yeah. need to leave Youth in and of itself, I think, is not the key. But to your point, I think, you know, if you're very to the point of having strokes and you need medical leave, you should take care of your health and not be trying to lead the country in, in this case. But I think it's not just youth, it's wisdom. And I think there's a crisis of wisdom. And that's where we, we have a lot of failed. Even young leaders are terrible. So it's not like they, just because you're young, you're better. If you're young, you could be even more foolish. McConnell doesn't seem to have any real wisdom about him either. That could be true. <laughs> I, mean, I Look, will not argue with that. I mean, I'm, I think he he has done some good things in his career, but I do think I agree with you. We need we need more. We need fresh, not just fresh leadership. We need good, good leadership. Healthy Capable. brains, man. Capable. Less Healthy calcified. Leadership. I don't know if it's calcified pineal gland, but we less aspartame in people's diets. Less high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, we corroding the neural network. Look, so, someone points out on Twitter. Any job in this country, you are 81 years old and suffer a seizure, 
they would say, look, it's, 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 it's time you go home, right? This is not the job for you. In fact, can he even be driving anymore? I'm not trying to rag on older people, but there is a point at which you are too young for a job and too old for a job. We're not going to put 12-year-olds in the coal mines. We should be putting 81-year-olds in Congress. Do you think we have, should do age limits now? It is a tough question because of the rate of technology. It should be more about capability. Cap I agree with that. I think if you're <laughs> if you're struggling with serious medical conditions, just like as you described from work, you could take Betterman. a leave. Yeah. So would it be Congress that, that votes to have the other congressman removed if there's a, a medical thing? I, I, I would love I would love it right now if uh, Congress uh, voted to uh, the Senate voted to remove mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell. It's almost an imperative. You, you know, we're missing a, a Kentucky representative right now. Or Fein, a, a Feinstein should be, well, he, should he, be out and McConnell should be out. And it's uh, tricky uh, when, they've been, be out. when they've been democratically elected, right? That is, that is trick back to what you were talking about earlier, Tim. You know, we, if we got into a system where we get to just out people because we consider them physically unfit, but they were democratically elected, you know, you, it gets into... No, but, but you can. It, we, 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 can we remove people from Congress all the time. Or not all the time. It's happened a couple times. Mm -hmm. You vote to send someone home. Uh... I wonder if Vivek Ramaswamy, he has he had a couple proposals. One publicly, he said there should be a civics test in order to vote. I'm not a fan of that. I don't think that makes sense. What I really like is you have to sign up for the selective service if you want to vote. If you sign up for the selective service, it uh, you get a voter ID. And if you have that, you're allowed to vote. And so I think that will solve a great deal of, of our problems you know, overnight. Vivek actually clarified on the show last week, he thinks when you turn 18, you don't have voting rights until you're 25, unless you pass a civics test or do six months of community service or military service. So it's either or. It's, I like it's, it's, the civics those, test. Uh, do I, you I, do or don't? I disagree. So you don't like the civics, te civics test? Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't think, I, I don't think it necessarily solves the problem. See, the thing is about signing up for the selective service is you're basically saying I'm willing to die for this country. And guess what? It's a very simple sign on the dotted line that no Democrat would be able to convince a run of the mill urban liberal to sign. But every conservative would be like, I love this country. Put my name down. However, a lot of people are going to say, I wouldn't sign up for that. This country is corrupt. No, no. If the voting base is just comprised of people who have pledged their lives to this country, you are not going to have these corrupt people because they can't get elected. Yeah, but what if and some you know, crazy president was like, oh, now all you guys, all you voters signed up for the selective service, we're going to war. Because they vote. Because it's only those people who get to vote. So when the president comes in and says, I'm initiating the draft, it's those people who say, recall, yeah, any, impeachment. Any, anything that, that like shrinks the number of, of ignorant votes, uh, I'm for. So limit voting like in any way possible, in my opinion. I don't think that... Uh, that it requires service. Um, I do get where you're coming from. I, I understand the, uh, the 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 idea that you have to have something on the line. I personally think that maybe owning a business or owning pro like something like that. Because you can start a business on, with a cell phone. So like if you actually start a business, then you have some kind of skin in the game. Uh, and it's know. and the barrier for entry is real low for that. And again, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm I'm I just don't think that that you have to go through, you know, serving the country. Uh, but you to, don't should be signing up for the selective service does not mean you're going to do any service. Oh, OK. So you're. Oh, yeah. Right. So, it means that yeah, if the United States is invaded, you, yeah. you you've pledged your life to defend it. Yeah. My now, a lot of people argue that. But, but the draft and World War One, two and the Korean War and Vietnam, I'm like, no, no, no. Listen, my point is this. There's corruption right now. It may just be an idealistic, perfect system. But imagine if the only people who could vote, meaning there could not be a foreign invasion of Syria, if everybody who had to go fight it were the people who were voting, they'd be like, I'm not going to go do that. So I'm voting against these people. Everyone else who sits in their ivory tower sipping tea being like, we should go to war for oil, wouldn't have a vote. And, and if they wanted to go, they'd vote. And you know what? There may come a point where, let's say you've got a 350 million people in this country, only 175 actually choose to sign up for Selective Service to vote, and there's a split vote. And 100 million say, we want to go to war for this reason, and 75 say you don't, but that's the point of saying, I pledge to this system. It's not always going to be about what you want, but you know everyone else voting for it has pledged the same thing but as the, you. The, and we don't even have you. everyone voting, though, who I think is well equipped to vote. So uh, this is, and, that's and, and part and of the thing. Oh, I, disagree. Like would, but I disagree with that entirely. I think there's a lot of people that don't vote that I think should vote is what I'm saying. Really? Yeah, especially like in the pro-life space and in the space where people have values. They love the country. They love what we were founded on. They believe in the future for the country. Often, yes, many are active and politically involved, but 
the thing is a lot of people who are doing that are busy running their businesses and raising their families. And so maybe they're not doing every election, you know, maybe they're, not, they're not as involved as they need to be. So we encourage more civic engagement. Right, <laughs> we need more, right. more, more, look, more look, of look, it. Look, look. And Mitch disagree. McConnell, his biggest issue is not, I mean, I hope he's well, you know, but I think his biggest issue is a failure to lead on fundamental human rights. And the Republican Party has made some strides because we, it's in our platform that life begins at fertilization and that abortion should not be permitted and that legal protection is deserved by all preborn humans. You know, but Mitch McConnell has not led you know like that in the Senate. Way, he's been squishy on you know it. The and fastest that's not way good. to get that is exactly what I just said. I, I went uh, uh, when I worked for these nonprofits 15 some odd years ago. They said, How, anybody here want to go see Death Cab for Cutie live? And I was like, that's like my favorite band. I would love to go see them live. And they were like, here's your vinyl all access pass. Here's your stack of voter registration forms. You're going to walk around and register people, register people to vote, but it gets you backstage access. And I was like, yes. And I walked around back. Like, you want to vote? You want to vote? I did not know their political affiliation, but come on, it's Chicago. They're all Democrats. What if I walked up to them and said, hey, do you want to vote? And they went, sure, I'll sign it up. Just sign that you are you want to join the draft and fight in the military. And they're like, no way. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.